Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you are right now. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Hot Talk Cast TV episode. If this is your first time here with us, uh, this is Hot Talk Cast TV, a webinar series sponsored by Ask Suite, the 2020 and the 2021 best hotel chatbot in the world by Hotel Tech Awards. Thank you for that. Uh, my name is Paula, and I'm the content specialist at Ask Suite. And I'm the host of today's live show. Uh, so yeah, please start interacting with us. Tell us where you are uh, watching the show. Tell us your country, your city. Let us know who you are. And today we're gonna talk about hotel marketing and revenue. Uh, should they be together forever? Should they keep being treated as different silos, different departments? Who knows? Uh, our guest knows, and they will tell us uh, their expertise. Uh, they'll share with us their experience. So they will also tell you, you what you should do, Atelier, when you think about creating your marketing and revenue strategies. Uh, what happens if the strategies are divorced and they don't talk to each other? So all of that we're going to cover today. Uh, if this is not your first time here and you know you probably know something about me and you know how my mind works uh, and I do associate everything with music. So when we start planning this webinar and thinking about this topic, all I could hear in my head over and over was Sinatra's song, Love and Marriage. I hope you, you, you guys know the song that I'm talking about. And Thus, the name of the, this, this webinar, right? You can't have one without the other. This is what we think about marketing and revenue. Uh, and we think that is the case. And to help you understand uh, why we think like that or why they should be integrated marketing and revenue, we have invited two uh, very special ateliers to talk with us, as you can see in our screen already. Uh, they are very uh, well-known specialists in the industry. Uh, we have Jonathan Liu and Valdin Duran. And before I introduce them to you, uh, let me just tell you that this is your chance to interact with us and ask them directly questions. So all you have to do is to write your question in the chat and we will do our best to answer it. So don't miss out on this chance. Don't be shy. Uh, tell us who you are, where you're watching, your questions or share your experience. Whatever you feel like sharing with us. We, we are good with that. So let's get this started. Uh, let's, let me say hello first to my uh, very special guest. First, we have Jonathan Liu, as I said, he is the Director of Revenue and Marketing Strategy at G GLH Hotels UK. Jonathan has a holistic approach to revenue strategy to champ that champions customer centricity across the entire guest journey. So hello, Jonathan, and welcome to the show. Hey, Paula, thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. Thank you for having the time to talk to us. And Jonathan, just in case, uh, is there some, so there is someone out there that doesn't know you yet? Could you just please introduce yourself briefly to the audience? Absolutely. <clears throat> I'm looking after the marketing and revenue strategy for GLH Hotels, where boutique chain of 18 hotels focused on London primarily. Um, but before that, I was with our core hotels working across Australia. Uh, Asia and the UK looking after sales distribution and revenue management. So a wide variety of different types of hotels, different countries, but great to be back in London and, and working with the great city. Great. Thank you again, Jonathan, for being here today. And we also have uh, Valdin Duran. Uh, he is the director of sales of BHT Hotel Boutique Concept. He has 14 years of experience in the hotel industry, including management and organization of operational structures and commercial strategies in international branded hotels. Hello, Valdin. Thank you so much for being with us today. No, Paula, I am the one who thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to share today with such a very special guest, Jonathan, you too. And, and all the Axfit team. So thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Valdin, for, for giving us your time. The time is the most precious thing we all have, right? So thank you a lot. And like I said to, to Jonathan, could you please just uh, briefly introduce yourself to our audience in case there is someone that don't know you yet? Of course, actually, I work for a small local independent hotel chain in, in Peru, is BTH Hotels. Uh, I'm in charge and work with a small team leading the sales strategy and marketing as well. 
And before that, I used to work in, in sales department in other hotels chains like Hyatt, uh, Marriott too. So happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Valjean. So we have a lot, tons of experience here. I'm very, very excited. Let me say hello to Clara and greetings from a sunny Ireland today. Well, uh, right back here where I am, it's not sunny, unfortunately. But hello and thank you for being here today, Claren. Uh, okay, so let's get started because we have a lot to cover. As I said before, the topic today is marketing and revenue and how they should be together or not. Uh, maybe our guests may, may disagree with me and they are allowed to. Uh, we, we, we see that uh, many industries, including hotel industry, tend to treat marketing and revenue as uh, two different silos, right? Uh, but like I said, uh, we, we think they should be very alike. And we are seeing actually the trend, this trend where hotels put sales and marketing under the same roof. And I think the uh, great example is here with us is Jonathan, because your job title, Jonathan, it is Director of Revenue and Marketing. It is already together in your job title. So my first question to you two uh, is why it is important to create hotel marketing and revenue strategies together or not, if you want. Uh, and I start with you, Jonathan, please. What's your thoughts? I think it's a very natural progression that, that marketing and revenue come together. If you think about where, mar uh, where revenue has come from in the past, it's been very data-driven, looking at the numbers, understanding the customer. And more and more today, marketing strategies, particularly digital strategies, are all about numbers and, and knowing your customer. So there's a lot of transferable skills from one discipline to the other. And really, with any strategy you put together to drive revenue, it's going to be sales and marketing that support those strategies overall. Great. And Valdin, what are your thoughts about this uh, union or this marriage between hot, uh, marketing and revenue? Well, if you really think about revenue management as a as a as a philosophy or, or as a as a discipline, it states that you have to sell right the, the, the exactly or the correct price in a certain correct time and to certain correct people. But I think for you to know to which people you have to sell, you need to to integrate or collaborate with marketing team. So from there, you can see that it's really, really and extremely important. And nowadays, I mean the pandemic. Uh, times to work together and also we have studies that state that um, the hotels that work together revenue management and marketing they can increase their revenue even six percent or five or three percent in some cases so there you can see how important it is yeah, yeah, that, that's a very good point, uh, Valjean. And uh, let me just say hello here to people because I asked them to say hello. So uh, hello, uh, Marian, uh, greetings from Grenada in the Caribbean. Hello, hello from Peru. Hello from Kuwait as well. Uh, Doha, Canada, Toronto. Hello, everybody. And if you're just, uh, just arriving here right now, we are just uh, starting by talking uh, why it's important to have marketing and revenue strategies together. And Jonathan, you were you were saying before that this was something that was uh, happening. It was already happening. It wasn't in, in its way, on its way uh, naturally. But do you think uh, somehow the pandemic and the fact that uh, this is my theory, <laughs> uh, the fact that the uh, hotels have to operate with less people as well maybe can give a push uh, where the hotel industry understand that there's not separate silos, it's everything should be united. Absolutely. I think as people and teams get smaller, they have to do a lot more and they have to be over the holistic business overall. It's, it's really important that you have all those strategies marrying up and those people who are putting those strategies and actions in play should understand all of those areas. So I think through the pandemic, it, it's put focus on that. And I think also from our customer's point of view, they're going online a lot more. I mean, even my grandmother is is doing all her shopping and supermarket online now. She would never do that before. So people are, are naturally gravitating to the internet to, to book their experiences, to buy things online. So more and more transactions will be there and digital marketing in particular is gonna be a really strong, powerful force even more so than it was before the pandemic. 
Yeah, yeah, now you're talking about uh, your grandma, right? Uh, my mom is, she's the queen of e-commerce. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but it, it did. <laughs> she's much better than than I, what I do. It's like, really, it's insane. But yeah, now every, it's not this, I don't think it doesn't have any more. And Valdine, I think you, you work a lot with this uh, also online experience that we are mentioning here. Uh, it doesn't have any, before people was, I used, we used to hear from some hoteliers or some hotels that, Oh, but my audience is not so much online. My clients, they don't go through through that channel. But that's over, right? I think that that myth it's already it, it disappeared. Uh, what you what you were seeing from your side, Valdine, in this uh, experience of the online experience and also the marketing and the digital marketing helping revenue. Well, actually, if you see. Uh, after the pandemic, well, during the pandemic, more than 60% of the global uh, population in the world have has gone digital, and 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 this has changed dramatically. The the, the buying cycle, the consumer behavior has changed like 360 degrees, and that's why that's the the main thing where you have to start thinking how you should get together and work because there are much much. And there are many things to do now, and, and that's why you need to collaborate. For example, um, now people, they, they used to, to, to still, I mean, I'm sorry, they still were used to book through, through a travel advisor, through a travel agent, and now that this all this situation and that we're living now uh, has made them change and start um, uh, traveling online. But not only this, Digital marketing is also working very much in what we call reputation management. So more than ever, it's important you to have a, a, a great like vision or, or perception from the customer. Why? Because now not only two, three from each thing, I think 10 of 10 people will see your reviews before taking a decision. And not only that, how revenue management have a role here. You know that revenue management, they deal with a lot of data, a lot of data. So there are information here that will help digital marketing team and, and the other in taking decision and creating campaign and promotions. Because now you will see that this is, there is a different behavior. This consumer like this, they don't like this anymore. So let's play this. Will this promotion work? to whom we have to, and you know, the most important thing, budget. Budget now is tight. So we have to be strategically working now on, on which channel should we use, which people whom to sell. So digital marketing will help us a lot, saving time in, in identifying this, this kind of information together with revenue management team. Yeah, that, that that's a really good point. And you were talking about uh, also when you mentioned the behavior, and Jonathan also was mentioning about the online behavior that has changed uh, in so many ways. Uh, and I think also we were talking before backstage, the, the FOMO, the fear of missing out something. And uh, and I think that that also happens in the hotel industry in the sense that uh, people contact you online and they want it fast and they want the ex expectations are super high. Like the, the, it must be really tough for you guys, hoteliers and general managers, uh, to to deal with that, right? Uh, Valdin, are you seeing this also? This uh, it was okay. Even back in the days, I was a hotelier, but like seven years ago, uh, guests were not so much patient, waiting for answers or waiting for a, a service or any kind of service. But I think now it's even worse. Uh, do you agree that that also changed the behavior in this uh, digital? overflow of of channels and all that more than the patients what we have to understand is that two things customer experience or customer journey doesn't start when the guests get into the hotel it starts when the guests start searching for your hotel or searching when, when i want to travel that's one thing and the other is that customer is much more informed than before and also the same desperate attitude of going out it will make him also impatient on taking decisions online 
So you don't have a second opportunity to build a first great impression. So on the online experience, you have to make sure that your a presentation of your or in your communication through through any kind of channel should be a standard omni channel. I mean, you should share the same thing, not only rates, and also easy and think also which mean they're using. I mean, I can have the best hotel website on the desktop, but what if it's not on the mobile phone, right? Or you have to think also who is who who's the person who's booking. And another very important thing uh, that hotels, we don't pay attention. We are thinking too much in the future, in the future, and, and who book and what is on the book and who book this month. But we have also to understand the guest behavior in terms of booking, length of stay, in terms of cancellations, in terms of no shows. Is he just watching or is he just checking now or he will book immediately? These are information that we will gather together with marketing and revenue on the online guest experience. So now, more than just for ending the idea, more than thinking on being a very responsive website or having a very responsive website, we have to, to uh, we need to have a, a system or a technology that allow us to gather that data in a very short time period of time. I mean, how much traffic? What can we do with this traffic? You know, and not only on the books, also cancellations. Why is canceling and all this information? I think this is what we have to focus on now, talking about the online experience. Great. Uh, well, let me say hello here to more people are coming in. Thank you all for enjoying our, our show. Uh, hello, London. Uh, hello, Peru. Hello, India. Hello, Brazil as well. Uh, guys, if you're watching us now on the live show, uh, please uh, feel free to ask the questions. Uh, I know you probably have one or two in your head right now, so you don't be shy. Just write it, write it to us, and we will be happy to to answer you. And uh, Jonathan, we were already covering, starting to talk about online customer journey, which I know it also very key in your strategy as a general manager. So uh, if you could just give give the teliers they're watching us now uh, a. A few key points uh, that any hotel uh, should think about when it comes to online customer journey. Any good tips, maybe, I, I or think, good practice? Yeah, I, I think regardless of the, the style of hotel or the, the size of the hotel, your customers are always going to be looking for value for money. And that value for money is different per customer. And it really comes as a, a combination of how much someone's willing to, to pay. So the price coming from revenue management and the experience that they're looking for, and that's really driven by the marketing and, and brand experience and then delivered by the operations. So if you can get those two components right, you get the price in the right position to that customer and you deliver the experience that they're looking for, all of a sudden you've created this value for money and it's that value for money people are looking for and that will, will drive repeat business um, and advocacy for your hotel as well so they can spruik the words and to other people to attract more people. So one of the things around pricing is making sure that you're you're relevant to what they're looking for. These days, customers can go on to myriads of channels. They can go all over the place and find the same product, but they need to see a value in what they're booking. And that could be as much as terms and conditions, payment, flexibility. Flexibility is really important now with all the, the changes with, with COVID. So focusing on those elements is is really important and being clear with what will happen at the hotel is also very important to build that experience out. Nice. Uh, you mentioned uh, giving value. I think that's one mistake that uh, unfortunately many still, still make until today. Like it's not a, it's not about the price. It's about the value, right? And and I think you, 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 you nail it, Jonathan, when you say that uh, you need to, you need to know uh, what your guests are expecting. Who are your guests? And also, I think it's something that seems uh, basic, but um, I think many uh, don't actually look at it. What what makes your hotel special? And uh, it is amazing. I don't know if it happens ha had happened to you in your experience, Jonathan, or you heard someone, whatever, uh, that mm, sometimes the, the hotel or the general manager in the case thinks that hotel is it's it's known or it's good for this reason 
but it's actually not really why people are actually booking with you. Uh, so ha, do, do you do you see this um, this struggle of of how how to know why your tell is is unique? <laughs> Absolutely. But over the last 12 months, while our hotels have been closed, we've actually looked at a lot of our customer data and, and understood what our customers wanted. And we've actually created a brand new brand, which we've, we've launched today. I'm coming from the, the new Claremont in London. That's and so cool. <laughs> Congratulations. What we've, what, we've, what we've understood is that, that people really just want flawless comfort thoughtfully delivered. They just want to know what they're getting and, and be not wowed by it, but they just know and feel comfortable that they're getting what they've paid for. And one of the smallest things that we, we've done is we've said to all our people who book direct, you can check in at any time. Not, we don't have this set 3 p.m. or 2 p.m. If oh. you book direct with us, check in at any time because we want to be convenient for you, not convenient for us. It's, it's, it's really switching it around and being really customer-centric rather than playing by the hotel rules that we, we have done in the past. Well, wow, that's that, that's really a, a nice touch. I have to say, I, I haven't heard that before. Like this totally uh, freedom to to choose uh, the the checking time. I can I can only imagine that you have, a, of course, a, a, not only a well trained team, but a very organized plan to not go to don't don't get south. Did you say that? I think uh, don't go wrong, right? Because it yeah. it can be a challenge. I think <laughs> it can, and, and that also gives an advantage for for booking direct. So if someone's booking yeah. through a, an OTA or another channel, then we do have our standard check-in times. But it just gives that little bit of extra value for our guests who are coming direct to us. And perhaps for those guests who've booked through another channel, if they come direct next time, they'll get that value as well. And it's that instant reward, that instant recognition that we want to really give to our customers. Yeah, and I think I, uh, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, and Anusha, <laughs> she's talking. She's from India, and she's also talking about the online experience and the OTA and getting direct bookings. And Valdine, I think this is also uh, like we have said before, and Jonathan is saying it is a great opportunity uh, when you have these direct bookings to really understand your your uh, your clients, your guests, and to provide value. And and I think this is a time that. We are seeing, at least in our our clients here, that's at Suite, that it's increasing direct bookings because also people are more hesitant. They want to talk directly to the hotel, and that could be a really good uh, good way of improving your revenue and customer satisfaction, right? Actually, Paula, there is a very important topic here, and I'm going to land to two examples because I think this will help the, the audience like interpret better, but. We have to be careful with that because normally, uh, 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 for example, independent hotel owners, they usually struggle with that and they complain about that, that they have to pay a commission to others and everything. I mean, I think the strategy should be focused on, okay, make a, as you can to drive more direct bookings, but don't forget that OTAs are your eyes where you're not a branded hotel. So, so you're gonna get much more visibility through OTA. So what do you have to do? Well. I have, a, I have to pay a commission to order. So let's take all the advantage of what Enota can give me. Okay, so take gather the data it gives you to take decisions because it gives you real good data. Also, take advantage of that to, the, to, to have more visibility. Remember that in Google Hotel Ads or, 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 or in all digital marketing uh, things, Ota, they are a very great player. And at the very beginning of the pandemic, people thought, oh, now, because of all the, the struggle that consumer has lived with the OTAs, they won't book anymore with OTAs. But don't think about that. They will be booking more, even more, because OTAs, they are, you know, changing the, the, the strategy. So we can make together, work hard on, 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 on getting more direct bookings, but continue working with Ota. In also, if you think oh, the OTAs can be a great companion or a company on, on, on gathering new clients, because once you get this client through the OTA, he will never come back through an OTA. Now you will come back through me. You know, it's a very great way to prospect and sales, even though even corporate segment, right? On the other hand, we were talking a very important topic about the value, but I'm sure that many hoteliers here in the audience, they struggle what I have to add to the price. And there comes marketing revenue again. What I have to add, what I have to give. Well, I have to make a, 
a buyer persona or I have to build a, 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 a FODA analysis, you know, but you have different kind of segmentations. So what should I do? Well, value, we can translate it in three things. Number one, the experience the guest live, most important thing. Number two, the time he saved. And number one, the money he saved. So think on, th on things that you can add to your hotel that will apply these three factors or elements. And also think of that, what makes the hotel special, right? Is what makes the guest special. And here comes revenue management. Revenue management will tell marketing team to whom we have to sell. The, 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 the example that we have to land. Borders are closed here in Peru, in Lima. So what is the demand coming from now? Revenue management tells you that the demand is coming from local people, culprit, and also a, a Peruvian. But what happened? That Peruvian people, the local people in, in Peru, they don't like to go to a branded hotel. I don't want to talk bad about a branded hotel. I just want to say the facts. They don't like too much to go to a branded hotel because the hotel, they will find a room with a shower and that's it. So marketing team has helped us identify new things that we can add to this rate, build a package that add more value. So, so this is the way that we have to start working, right? What is that he needs or what we may make this, this new guest uh, uh, comfortable? For example, you might think, oh, wow, let's, I'm totally uh, uh, empty. Let's make a last minute, let's make a last minute uh, campaign, the marketing team says because this is one of the things that might happen when you don't work together. Marketing team say, oh, wow, we see a lot of people booking a, in the last minute, let's make a campaign, but wait, wait. If you build a campaign in last minute, you will get the consumer used to book in last minute because he's waiting for this special promotion. So if you see a higher demand on a certain date, that's where you have to leverage. And who gives you this information? Revenue management with the data collection. And to end the topic and the idea, you know that revenue management team, they have like this revenue management tools, technically and technologically talking, that gives you the, the, the advices. But really, really, what really helps the revenue management to take a decision is the marketing team, because that system won't tell you what are the things that I like. Yeah. That's not my opinion. No, yeah, I think you, you, you nail it too, Valdine. I think, thank you for sharing some uh, examples, practical examples. The audiences are, I, I say thank you, <laughs> Mr. Valdine, someone said here. So I'm passing uh, to you. And I think you, you said something that very important too. Of course, OTAs, they are they have their importance. They, I think they, they reach a wider audience that you alone, especially for a small independent hotel, would would reach they they do have their value uh but i think it's important like you said i, I read some ceo uh, actually in an interview uh i don't remember if it's hilton so i don't i'm not gonna say it but anyway uh ceo of a big big hotel chain said i don't mind paying the uh, a commission for the first time uh a guest stays in my hotel i don't mind if i have to pay it again if, if the same guests come back and I think that it's what you're saying. You have to create and give, provide a good experience so they come back to you. So OTAs are really, really good uh, in attracting, especially attracting new audience. And I think it's up to the hotel uh, creating loyalty. Uh, how do you see that, Jonathan? How do you see uh, how, how you're seeing this uh, new scenario of online uh, um, direct bookings and OTAs? Do you see any difference? now and and before the, the COVID or something? Uh, I think having distribution partners is really important, especially in a market like London that's international. There are plenty of, of countries and destinations where I'm not necessarily going to have the funds to support the translation of my website into the local language. So working with some partners on specific campaigns in different destinations allows me to untap that market and to, to test that market. And perhaps in time, I learn that there is a big enough market that it does make sense for me to invest in those extra services and languages. But in the meantime, it's great having a partner who knows the customer, who can get to the customer in their local language, because people always feel much more comfortable to make a purchase in their own language rather than doing it in the, the language that is 
where the destination is. That's really important. Yeah. Uh, and um, Valdin, again, back to you. Uh, you were saying you're talking about uh, enhancing the, the guest experience uh, once they are in a hotel, right? Uh, and, you, and you even mentioned how you can also, how can you add value, uh, the difference between value and prices and how can you add value. Uh, what do you, are you seeing as the, the most common strategies? Do you see any, any pattern now uh, about uh, marketing strategies overall in, uh, in, in, in Peru or in, in South America? Actually, as Jonathan mentioned, uh, uh, one of the most important or most used value that people are adding are the flexibility. And you can think, well, I don't have any kind of big demand in my hotel. My occupancy runs the, what, 30%? So I can organize my team to have that room ready whenever I want to come. And there is nothing more than giving the room early to a guest that wants to escape, you know, or a guest that wants to go for work and, and arrives early in the airport. So uh, um, this is one of the most used, but always will depend the country, the feeder market and all these things. For example, we are working in Peru with, with local companies because you know that uh, the mining uh, industry and energy industry, they have to go through, through tests, COVID tests to go to work. So uh, the, I mean, the companies they don't have a, a specific amount of people who will be coming that day or they might be traveling from other cities, so they are going to be they are going to be coming early in the morning. So I think the best value in this situation will be flexibility in cancellations and also in 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 um, early checking or late checkouts, right? But how can you how revenue management team can play there to 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 always save money or or increase the money? Well, you analyze all the historical data. And now you can see, ah, okay, this company has a 10 or 15 percent of no shows. Why? Because you have seen all the days coming, how it works. And this will help you to forecast how much people will be, how many people will be coming, you know? And the other thing too, it will depend also on the on the on the on the on the people who are, who's coming. And how also can I in my hotel generate more revenue if I don't see many people coming with experience. We have to have a culture, global mindset, right? We have to start learning the team. The front, I'm, I'm sorry that I want to stand on this, but it's important. The front of team will be your ally on, 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 on sales, right? Because they know the customer. So whenever you make a meeting, include marketing, revenue, sales, and if possible, the front desk manager. And also, um, these people, they will be providing information that will help us a lot in, in, in with, 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 uh, with this um, buyer persona and with this empathy map that we have to build again, right? Continue with the topic, um, talking about the values. We learn it on the run, on the road, what things we can add. It's not in a specific one, like early check-in, late check-out or, or flexibility, okay? We can realize that the local people, they like, like, Oh, I want to have a dinner maybe because it's my anniversary. Ah, let's make a package. And instead of decreasing the rate, what it will affect negatively on your on your integrity as a brand, add a dinner, you know, and build packages. This is another way that pop, that is popular here with, with value adding, talking about, right? Adding like packages. For example, uh, uh, here in Peru, the, 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 the events, you know that we still have to wait a little bit more for mines to, to, to revamp. So what can I do? Well, think on your country, in India, that we have this a lot. In US, how many startups and entrepreneurs do we have? Why don't you build a very low price package for meetings? As you have a restriction, there you have an explanation of why should I have this so inexpensive meeting package? You know what I mean? It makes sense. Now, if Emily Clark called me for a meeting, hey, sorry, this is for entrepreneur. You know what I mean? So this is the way that we will be creating a, a lot of value. It will depend on the country, the people who's coming, and all this data will be given by the digital marketing team with the content they build and the information they attract, and also the revenue management team telling you the length of the stay of the guests, what are the need periods, and what build your, your, your demand calendar, what's coming, you know. 
Yeah, well, that's uh, again great about the many great examples. And I'm going to have the same questions to you, Jonathan. Uh, are you seeing any any more common strategies, marketing strategies over there in the UK? And uh, I'm asking you also. To, I'm going to add a little bit extra spice on your on your <laughs> on your question because we were mentioning before this the show started uh, as uh, UK is to have borders closed and. Many hotels uh, rely on international guests. So I'm guessing you you guys had to rethink the strategies, <laughs> and maybe a lot. Uh, and if this is, I think pandemic show us that, uh, well, actually story showed us that you have to survive, uh, to adapt to survive. But now in business, even more. So, and how 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 you deal with that in the UK? Because um, maybe you had you have to to change your strategy. Yeah. We've had to change a shift hugely from an international focus to the domestic market. And traditionally, the domestic market sees London as very expensive, very busy, crowded. It's a big city, so they don't necessarily want to come to London. So we've had to work with a number of partners to talk about the destination, to talk about the experiences that you can have in London. And particularly now, while London is quieter, it's a great time to come to London. And that's what we've really built packages about cruising on the river, it's about looking at the local landmarks, and rather than having hordes of tourists, you've actually got space to enjoy Buckingham Palace and Hyde Park and things like that. So working with the destination, working with the local tourism authorities is so very important, and that's where the, you can tap into marketing funds that you don't necessarily have and then get the, the wider reach to that, that, that audience. And that will even make sense when we start to open international borders as well because as a destination, UK will be looking to attract those international guests again. So working with our international tourism boards and, and getting those deals out there is, is really valuable. Well, yeah, yeah I, again, uh, great practical examples. And you sold me uh, the idea of visiting London right now because uh, I, I, I'm, I'm one that thinks that London's always crowded and all that. So, yeah, it is, uh, as soon as we as I can, maybe I, I will I will get in a flight and, and go to London. But uh, what we see during the pandemic and still now, and continue this this question, Jonathan, to you, uh, is that uh, uh, some hoteliers said, "Oh, but it it is a lot of work, like to temporarily change my strategy." So then I have to go back to where I. What would you, what do you say to these uh, uh, hotel managers? They're they're kind of in a dilemma in a way, and, and don't know what to do. If they you know, like you said, maybe after the borders are open, then you go back to your your target yeah. audience or not. Or <laughs> I, I think in today's world with digital marketing, you can easily turn things on and off very very quickly and and move pots of money, um, particularly if you've got a good preparation behind you. So if you have an understanding who the key markets will be as they start to return. You can prepare in advance while it's a little bit quieter. And then as soon as borders open, you can then focus on those, those markets. You can even work with OTAs to, to understand what that demand pattern is and, and particularly search. If you can understand from your partners what the search demand is, then you know that when things will open again, those bookings will come through. And that gives you a focus of where to start to focus and, and spend and prepare to, to actually put the marketing dollars into play. Yeah. Uh, well, we're talking, you you and Valdina already mentioned technology and data, and I'm going to go back to Valdina now. Uh, of course, if technology it is a hot topic in the industry, uh, and and I think it's, uh, it, it's good. I think the hotel industry as a whole, uh, was a bit behind maybe if you compare to other industry in terms of using technology and they kind of many hotels now have to use technology but as you both point out uh, the data gives you um, the hints and the, the you know the tips and but that it's it's up to the human right to uh, to best use use it uh, Valdina you already mentioned some of the uses of technology especially in revenue uh, how, how do you see this uh, hotel tech world and how they can help hoteliers in terms of marketing and revenue and also customer journey? Well, we, we have to, to, to understand that, well, yes, robot and human can work together. I mean, technology and human can work together. Technology will be a mean for you to 
to get faster or to or to uh, seamless or smooth to to all things that you do. But yes, uh, I mean, uh, we at least here in Peru, for example, we have this kind of mindset of like technology is expensive, or for example, oh wow, I, I can I can have this platform because uh, uh, it's too expensive, but give it a try, give it an opportunity, you know. And you you can take advantage that before I starting talking about what are those one you can take advantage of this situation. I mean, a, a technology companies or softwares salespeople they have a lot of flexibility with pricing and and, and and testing you know and leverage that. I want to test first. Let's see how it goes, right? So uh, <clears throat> realize or understand that in total. Speaking, you know, platforms and softwares, they will be the price that you pay. It will be always on regards of the size of your hotel and the amount of, of rooms and your average rate. So first of all, think about that. And some technologies that I think that are very important for you to in, um, for you to increase customer experience and have more revenue is besides, you know, all these revenue management tools is like, for example, a chatbot. Not because I'm talking about Africa, but. I think it, 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 my chatbot yeah, it, has helped me a lot. It, sorry, Valdin, it, it does sound like it's not really a neutral opinion, but thank you for that. Oh, no, I, I need to, to bring it to attention and, and you will understand why. Listen, I have realized that the 68% of the, of the question answered by us has been made out of people uh, work shift, you know, 9, 8 p.m. And imagine how this can increase the customer online journey when you get a, 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 a simple answer, you know, or, or I want to see, I want to see the, the promotions you have. That's the one. I want to see the promotion you, you guys have. And everyone is busy. No one answered my WhatsApp or my phone. I go to another hotel. You know, that's, a, that's just a simple idea. And also other um, uh, platforms or software that can help you um, increase, uh, I mean, revenue, because it's not only about selling the room. Is also about selling ancillary revenue or also remember don't think that means I well I'm the receptionist I'm not gonna sell this case in Abre because he doesn't have money how do you know that you know what I mean so uh, there are platforms or softwares that can you can apply to your website that can send pop-ups you know of, of all the things that I can that you can have in the room upgrades a, a flower arrangement you know what I mean a spa treatment and, and also, for example, there's another one that I just read that is really interesting that is called like trace something. I will search it again. But imagine with a QR code, you can scan it and send a, a, a notification to the team to go and pick up your 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 tray. You know, you, you order room service. Normally, the people, they just leave the tray in the hall. Another guest goes by the meantime that you're going up and, and bring it up. They can see it. They don't feel that cleanliness as you want to spread or share. Right. So they use this like to advise immediately or to realize or know where the trays with the dirty dishes are. Imagine that. Or you can also um, think of technology that help you increase your experience in terms of, of service. That I don't have to call the, 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 the reception to ask for something. That I just send a message. And the most important to finish, pre-arrival content is really, really extremely important to build loyalty and to build also great expectations. So all these kind of technologies will definitely help you in this uh, rebound or rebound uh, time after or during the COVID. One of the technologies that we use, which I, I absolutely love, is sitting on our, our website. And it is about those pop-ups. And it's, it's basically an an AI program sitting in the background that's, that's looking at a customer's intent to buy. So if we know they're going to buy, I'm not going to give them a discount, but perhaps I can give them an, an upgrade offer or, or a late checkout that they can purchase. But if I can identify them and they're not going to purchase and they're, they're just shopping, then maybe if I give them a 30%, 40% offer just there, right then, never to be repeated, we try and build that conversion. And I think Focusing on conversion and doing those things to drive conversion is really important. You mentioned content as well, and, and conversion, um, it, it really is about content as well. It's about getting the right information to the customer on the website, through a chatbot. But if someone is comfortable in, in actually 
making the transaction, they've got all the information they want and you can convince them that it's the right thing to do, then people will buy. So, so that will be really important. So there's a couple of technologies that you can just plug into existing websites, into existing systems. You don't have to go and build a brand new website. I think that's really important as well. I really agree. We're actually just going through a process at the moment where um, we are looking at our websites, looking at that content, and we've decided that a lot of our content needs to be written. In this post-COVID world, there, there really needs to be a, a new focus on health and safety and security, um, as well as flexibility. So by going back and just looking at your content, rewriting your content, giving it a new, fresh feel that people are looking for the right things, then that can really work as well. So. Focusing on content, keeping it fresh is really, really important. I can see here that Polo just posted the question that is, uh, what is the recommendations when acting on denials, whether tracking those via phone, reservations, or via website, card abandonment rates? What do you think about that, uh, 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 Jonathan? Well, we definitely, we track our regrets and denials. Um, it's really important to, to look at abandoned browse as well. So. It's one thing to look at the cart and understand people who've actually put something in there, but even looking at people who've been to the website, they've gone through a different couple of pages, but actually haven't transacted. If they've logged into your website, you can easily go back to them and, and do that abandoned browse as well. And having the right communication back and forth with that customer, not immediately, but it could be 24 hours later, it could be 72 hours later, just to sort of follow up and say, noticed you're here, is there something else we can do? Add a little incentive to get them to book, and I think that can make all the difference as well. Yeah, of course, I agree with you. More than that, regardless, the way you contact is what to say and what to mention and how to. So we have to realize and try to understand where would be the perfect time to to to, to contact them. And if we decide to contact them via 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 phone, uh, sometimes we make a mistake that we call the guest and go straight to the topic. But I think that we rather when we make this kind of call call. We have to understand that introducing yourself and asking if he has a minute or a time will be crucial. Because if I call Paula and I say, Paula, hello, this is Walden, and I'm calling from BTH Hotel. I saw that you were asking for this and this, and I have this. But it's better if you say, Paula, do you have a minute I can talk? Like this, if the guest doesn't have the time, he won't hear you. He won't listen to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. But he, if he doesn't, then you say, what will be the best time for me to contact you? So that's, that's the trick things that we have to consider. Well, I'm so sorry I disappeared in the middle of the show. <laughs> you became the host, don't worry. <laughs> the, the power just went down. I have nothing. I just have my, my nephew's cell phone. So I am so sorry. And we were talking about technology. How ironic is that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you both for continuing the webinar while I was gone. And I'm sorry that I couldn't see what you guys were, were talking, but I can see here that people are thanking you in the chat, uh, both of you, and saying their interesting points. And even have one question here, and if you already answered that, uh, again, apologize. Uh, Anusha is asking here, can I get some ideas? How can digital marketing help in attract, attracting mice bookings? I think about Jean mentioned it a little bit before. Uh, if any of you have... Any thoughts that could help Anusha? Absolutely. I, I think in a lot of hotels, a lot of my hotel in particular, we have lots of event space and, and meeting areas. And having a dedicated strategy that begins with really good content and getting that content out to the right people is really important, especially within in your own database. If you have a database where you have your own customers, having those separate segments and knowing who the customer is that's booking meetings versus the person who's booking a, a weekend getaway is really important because you want the right content, the right offer to get to the right person. If you don't have that, it just won't resonate and you end up wasting dollars talking to someone that they don't really care what you're talking about. True, Valdi? Can, can you remind me the name of the person who was posting the question? Well, I hope I'm, 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 I'm saying it right, so sorry. Anuja. So, Anuja, that's a great question. What I recommend you to do is, uh, to all the audience, first of all, great, uh, Jonathan, you just say the content that you will share, but please don't wait until mice start revamping to start with the strategy. 
I think the first and best strategy will be to start keeping the contact with with those people. Get out your 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 database, as Jonathan said. Put on 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 a file all these people and start calling them. Make conference calls. Start how I start talking about how are you doing. Uh, get some insight and also start sharing what means are you taking to make my segmentation more secure? I mean, why why do I have to stay in the hotel? What are the things that you're doing? Actually, we both know, with the three of us know that it's not starting now, but it will start soon. So start contacting the people uh, by, the, by, by the back, you know, contacting them, making calls, writing emails. How are you? I hope you're doing better. Your family is fine, right? And also the content, digital marketing. I mean, start reading and get information of what is happening. What are the trends? Okay. And start sharing content that provides value. Tips for my new meeting. Okay. Facts about hybrid and, and presence events. You know, start reading. I mean, the trick is this. Content is on the internet. But people don't like to read. So start you with your digital marketing strategy, showcase some videos, showcase some tutorials about things that I have, I, as I mentioned before, tips that I can do. Uh, not even sell yourself. Don't sell it. Focus on, 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 on things about the destination as well, not your hotel. I mean, what good things are doing in India, in London, in, in, in Lima, in Peru, you know, that, that can um, by somehow increase my, my experience. I think these are the type of content that I should share. I don't know if you agree, Jonathan. Absolutely. Content is, is absolutely key. And, and, and keeping that contact up right now is, is important. People, people want to have that connection. And although they might not have the need for a meeting now, if you have that connection, they'll think about you when they do have that need. You want to be the you want to be front of mind. You want to be right there when they they have that decision to be made. Yeah, well, uh, of course, I do believe in the power of the content because I am a content specialist. So again, very <laughs> bias here. Uh, before we end it, uh, the show because we are heading to the end. Uh, Liliana is saying here. I think revenue and marketing, especially digital, must work hand in hand. Uh, marketing and revenue data is so important to create an adequate strategy. And I go back to you, uh, Jonathan, because I actually didn't ask you. I talk, I talked about your title being director of revenue and marketing altogether. Uh, if, if if someone like me doesn't know exactly what it means in 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 practice, that uh, uh, you do have two different departments, but you oversee both of them. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So we still have our, our individual departments. We'll have the brand marketing team, we'll have the digital marketing team, and then the revenue managers and, and their teams as well. But it's about coming together regularly. It's about sharing the insights across the full team. And as part of that as well, we bring the sales team in. It, that's really important. It, it's not just revenue and marketing. You need the salespeople as well to get out there and sell. But everyone has their role to play. Everyone has a, a, a piece of the family that they have with them. So it's important to keep that communication open and share as much insight as possible. And that sharing insights, Jonathan, uh, do, it, it help, It happens through m regular meetings or it, it is by email, everything? or how, how Everything. It? It, it's regular meetings. It, it's, it's sitting next to each other in the hotels and offices. It, it, it's having those regular networking sessions just to talk about what are our customers doing? What are we learning? What are we hearing from our industry partners? And I think the more that you have that interaction, more day-to-day -day happenings will just have that water cooler moment where you're talking about something and you share the right information at the right time. Everything is about timing. Everything is about content and it's about communication. Great. And Valdin, uh, do you have a, what is your experience or how, how do you see uh, the two departments actually working together? Uh, does it happen a lot of... Um, um, do you have meetings, or or how, how does how can in practice actually happen that these strategies are together? I just Jonathan mentioned is all about all kind of means, but but beside the means is connecting each other because is that they come with the mindset of I mean I I work here this is my information I don't share it we have to erase that you know it's kind of an orchestra like a symphony 
all of different instruments playing different things, but they are not doing like the same thing, you know, but it's still a, a, an harmony. So uh, meetings, WhatsApp groups, <laughs> uh, and other thing is like always, even though these are conference meetings because we cannot be together in a, in a room, just for example, always trying to do it in a different way. I mean, don't make that simple meeting. You go to the, to the, to the table, drink your coffee and sit. I mean, try to make some dynamics, try to start with other things, games, role plays, you know, that will help them a lot. And also uh, uh, something that will work a lot also is try to identify the different kind of intelligence of, of everyone. You know, everyone will have a soft skill that will help in the other department. That's, that's all about not only just sharing the information, but also connecting with, with the different skills. I think this is the, what we usually do. That, yeah, that, that's really key because I think uh, no one knows it all. Uh, no one, no one. Uh, you have your speci uh, speciality, and you, you're best in that, in that. And I think it's up to you guys, uh, general managers and directors, to spot the 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 best of each uh, member, team member, and and align them and, and put them together to to work in harmony, right? Uh, Paulo is saying here to sitting next to each other and walking around the hotel, visiting departments. What a cooler moment. These are all great practice to establish connection that you all talk about and empathy. And like Jonathan said, of course, here we just uh, we, we just made a uh, we, we, we just focus on hot marketing and revenue. But it is the whole uh, the whole hotel. It is customer service, guest experience or sales or even finances. Why not? So I think it's. Uh, Everybody should be together. So to, to end this uh, webinar, that it's <laughs> a little bit traumatic for me, <laughs> but to recovery. <laughs> uh, before before we, we ended, just then a final provocation. So marketing and uh, revenue, they should be together forever, right? Or should they get a divorce? What is your thought, Valdin? Final thoughts about it? Well, my final thought is that it's like the the horse and the carriage. I don't know which one is the other, but it should work like this. Because as mentioned before, what revenue management need from marketing? They need a demographic and psychographic information. They need a, a, a behavior, behavioral information. And what marketing needs from, from, from revenue management? Well, a, a, a reservations behaviors, booking behaviors, right? Uh, they need a uh, uh, pricing, pricing strategies, because marketing will send the communication to each guest. But what should I sell? You know, I don't determine the price. So it's no more time to be afraid of of of, of getting there and and, and, and build a, a, a how do we say a fundamental like a, 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 something that um, for, I don't know how to say in English force your your decision. I mean. This is another advice for all you guys, hotelers. If you go to the revenue management team to request something, right? Bring it, but bring why it's important to have it because not, it's not always about price. This is the trick for you to get them say yes to always this no. And the other thing is marketing that should continue working on digital marketing and content. So I, a, a special advice just to end for all these people that are listening to me now, an idea is start recognizing and, and rewarding the team, operational team, front desk and, and housekeeping and, and, and restaurant, how for every piece of information they can get. I mean, build a program like points program. Every information you can bring from this guest goes to our CRM, but you get a point, one more point, one more point, and when you have this amount of point, and like this, you will be a ton of data that will help you taking decisions. Thank you, Paula. Well, that's really nice. And what about you, Jonathan? Your final thoughts about this marriage or divorce? Um, it's really obvious it's for you. It's a marriage, but anyway, it's definitely, any final they're definitely living. Un they're definitely living under the same same roof. They're sharing a house together, but you also need to have sales there as well. So make sure it's a three bedroom house. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, thanks everybody for watching this uh, the show. An extra, extra thanks to my 
really cool, nice guest that continued the, the webinar even even though I was I was down here and <laughs> and had to disappear. So thanks everybody for watching this episode. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for having the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks, Paula. And and Jonathan, I know you are very uh, you are on LinkedIn. Uh, is this the best way if the audience is still want to absolutely keep in touch? find me find me on LinkedIn? That's the best place to keep in touch and look out for all the posts that I share. Well, yeah, and it, and you, you do we're talking about content and you do have a lot of cool content out there. Uh, and Valdin as well. Valdin is also very uh, active in LinkedIn. So thank you so much, Valdin, for having the time to talk to us today too. Pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you, Paula. And, and again, uh, can people reach out to you, to your LinkedIn? Well, if you can't, now I said it, so I don't think you can. <laughs> I think they will do it anyway. Message. No <laughs> well, thanks, everybody, uh, for watching this episode of AutoCast. Uh, if you have any feedback or suggestions, you can contact me on LinkedIn. Hopefully, my Wi-Fi would work. And if you want to learn more about how Ask Suite technology can help your hotel increase direct bookings and raise staff productivity, Activity, check out our website at asksuite.com. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody to, that interact with us. Uh, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.